Some, give me some time. They came back to him. They said, uh, yes. He said, I'm thinking. They said, what are you thinking about? He said, I'm thinking about a ship traveling in the ocean, sailing in the ocean. Then it, it, it sits at the shore. Okay? And then merchandise starts going out of the ship with no, no workers, no labor workers. This, the, mer- the merchandise by itself is getting out of the ship. And the ship has no captain, no human beings running the ship on its own. Ship comes, parks, merchant, the merchandise gets off the, 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 the ship, it lands on the thing, and then the ship goes away. They said, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. How are you going to tell us the ship is going to come and they're going to do this and nobody working, no workers? He said, subhanallah, and this whole earth and everything you see and me and you functioning and you're going to tell me that there's no one who brought it, no one is controlling it. If you can't accept the ship, then how are you accepting all this that you see in Iraq? It doesn't make any sense. Yani the atheist must be really out of his brains. He, the Shaykh, he said, Allah, really these people yani, have zero, no, yani, Allah has concealed their hearts completely. Otherwise, you cannot deny it. So the, the messengers were not according to the Tawheed al rububiyyah because almost everybody admits that Allah is the creator. But they were calling it Tawheed al uluhiyyah If you admit that Allah is your only creator, then do not worship no one with Him. That's what the messengers were calling to. That's the re- real meaning of La ilaha illallah. That is the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. There's no God worthy of worship but Allah. Because if you say it otherwise, Everybody claims to be a Muslim. And I've had many different conversations with Christians. They tell me, I, I believe in God, man. You keep talking to me like you are in, in one part of the world and I'm on the other side. I believe in God like you believe in God. I worship God. I pray to God. I remember God. What are you going to tell this person? Say, yeah, but you have three of them. You have Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They tell you, no, no. They're one. They're one. Say, so, oh, three is one. Then you try to, you know, you give him, you re- refute him. Say, hold on a second. Let me put one plus one plus one equals. One. Put one in the math class with you in kindergarten. The teacher will throw you out of the class. Say, go, man. I've been teaching you for two years, so you can come tell me one plus one plus one equals one. Common sense says one plus one plus one equals three. They will say, no, you don't understand. There's, there's mystery behind it. It's really logical. They're from the same essence, but they're not. And they will try to get philosoph- philosophical with you. And you know, this doesn't make sense. Tell them there's no way, no way that you're going to go to paradise or hell based on something that doesn't make sense, man. And you want to prove it to me and it does not make sense. I cannot, my mind cannot digest it. And if the, they are equal, then what happened when the son, the God, died? When he was crucified? when he was in his grave, before he got up according to them. Who was controlling the earth? They would tell you the father. So the father is better than the son. They are no longer equal. He said, no, they are equal. Say, but look, you are just going to make statements? Anybody could say anything. Somebody could say the same thing about Satan. Tell you, no, Satan is God. And he would tell you, you don't understand. God, if he wants, he could become Satan. And Satan is really God. If you want to just speak, uh, and just be a bunch of non- nonsense. Anybody can speak. You are not making sense, my dear Christian uh, in- invitee. You're not making any sense to me. And every time I give you something that is logical, you just want to reject it with, with nothing. You have to convince me. You will not convince yourselves. You will not convince yourself that they're really equal, but they want, one died, one was in his mother's belly, one used to eat and go to the bathroom. All this is God's, and He's equal to the one who sent Him. Then he, if he's a son, the father must exist before the son. Since when does the son come before the father? Yani it's nothing, akhi. It's a bunch of uh, f- philosophies and ideologies of human beings. It can never be God sent. Allah would never send uh, deviance to the people. Allah sends guidance. And that guidance is La ilaha illallah. So we need to understand that La ilaha illallah when we invite the non-Muslims because we are calling him to worship Allah alone. Because usually they already agree with you that Allah is the only creator. They don't think that the statues or, or Jesus created any of that stuff. So, uh, now the Sheikh here breaks it down. وَقَدْ قَسَّمَ الْعُلَمَاءُ رَحِمَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ التَّوْحِيدَ إِلَىٰ ثَلَاثَةِ أَقْسَامِ And the scholars have divided Tawheed into three categories. 
أحدها توحيد الربوبية which is the one we mentioned توحيد الربوبية the oneness of lordship that's how you write it the oneness of lordship وهو إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى في أمور ثلاثة في الخلق والملك والتدبير and it is to single out Allah as with three qualities three main qualities it's beyond that but these are the three most recognizable qualities خلق creation Allah being the creator المُلك دمني ownership دمنين owning يعني being the the one who owns everything and تدبير arranging the affairs of the creation okay تدبير arranging the affairs يعني هلا right now you got up in the morning you had your breakfast your body was moving you came to work you did your job these affairs these actions of yours throughout the day were arranged by Allah if Allah willed you wouldn't do nothing by the will of Allah we're doing what we're doing who's arranging our affairs Allah otherwise if Allah willed nobody could do nothing you pause so this is what is intended by tadbir it's from sustenance that is given to you the statements that you say the knowledge that you gain the words that you speak everything has been arranged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is uh, this is huh? Arranging. Arranging. Arranging the affairs. Arranging the affairs. Arranger. Arranging the affairs. We know you arrange things when you put them in order. نعم. يعني. You know what I'm saying. دليل ذلك and the evidence for that. قوله تعالى. Now there's an evidence. Now this is very important. أنا sometimes I will elaborate beyond what is in the book for the benefit. So we could benefit from the various aspects insha'Allah so it may, may take us longer to finish the book but maybe we'll get more benefit as well everything ya akhwan in Islam is based on dalil that's the only religion on earth who deals with you like this dalil is evidence somebody tell you ya akhi you know when you hear the adhan huh? you're supposed to say this dua you have the ultimate right to say give me the dalil give me the evidence you have to have an evidence Allah says in the Quran قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ say Allah says say uh, commanding Muhammad sallallahu to tell the people say bring your evidence if you are indeed truthful so whenever I advise you I must have a dalil either from the Quran or the Sunnah huh? Otherwise you can't tell people to worship Allah or you cannot make something halal or something haram with no evidence. You have to have evidence. This is why to keep the religion protected. So not every time somebody feels like something they added. Like the Christians. Anytime they feel like adding a new holiday, no problem. You want a new holiday? We'll make a new holiday for you. We'll make a candle day, table day, chair day, whatever. Mama day, Baba day, yalla kullu yiji. Ma fi mushkila. Anything you want, they do. One priest, pope, come say, okay, we're going to add this thing, and it becomes a worship. They do things Jesus never did. Now, they don't even know what Jesus did to begin with. They do things that they learn from priests, from human beings. Allah did not send any, any proof, any evidence for that. It's just an innovation of the people. Allah protected this deen that whenever we do an act of worship, there must be a dalil and evidence for it. Now, when we say that Tawheed is three categories, and that Tawheed al deals with creation and mulk, and tadbir, there must be an evidence. We can't just speak from our own minds. Tayyip, we understand with the mind what Allah has revealed, but we don't, we don't bring a revelation on our own. This is impossible. Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 54, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Ala lahu al khalqu wal amr. Ala, yani, verily for Allah is the creation and the command or the order. Verily for Allah is the creation and the command so for Allah is a creation Allah is a creator and no one shares this quality with him Azza wa Jal وَجُدْ دَلَالَ مِنَ الْآيَةِ أَنَّهُ قَدَّمَ فِيهَا الْخَبَرْ عَلَى حَقِّهِ الَّذِي حَقُّهُ التَّأْخِيرُ وَالْقَاعِدَ الْبَلَاغِيَّ أَنَّ تَقْدِيمَ مَا حَقَّهُ التَّأْخِيرُ يُفِيدُ الْحَصْرِ and the reason why we say this is because that which is supposed to be delayed was put in the beginning and that means in, in the language, in the eloquence of the Arabic language or even in the English, it's called exclusivity. 
So when you say in Arabic, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in, you actually say it is only you we worship, and it is only you we seek assistance from, not the other way around. You don't say, we worship you alone, and we seek your assistance. It is only you we worship. Why? Exclusivity. Meaning we don't worship none but you. This is part of the Arabic language. When that which is supposed to be delayed is put in the beginning, it indicates exclusivity. So if I say, if I say, I'm going to drink the water. In English, I am going to drink the water. I may drink some coffee first. I may drink some juice. But the bottom line is, I'm going to drink the water. This is a statement. But yet there's no really exclusivity. If I said, the water I will drink, and I had coffee and tea here, what do you understand from me? I'm not going to have nothing but the water. Or at least the first thing I will have is the water. The water I will drink, versus I will drink the water. If I say I will drink the water, I may go tick tick, then the water. If I say the water I will drink, you say, okay, this guy is serious, man. He's going to have the water, nothing else. Even in English, of course in Arabic, I'm just trying to bring the relation yeah, and make it uh, easier to understand. But in Arabic, this is very known. So, أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ Verily to Allah belongs the creation and the command. Rather than saying, uh, belong, uh, it, what belongs to Allah is the creation and the command. It's the other way around. Or the command and the creation belong to Allah. This is the one way. Verily to Allah belongs the creation and the command. The same way you say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا Rather than saying, نَعْبُدُوكَ We worship you or it's only you that we worship. This means exclusivity. ثُمَّ تَأَمَّلَ افْتَحَ هَذِي الْآيَةَ بِأَلَىٰ أَدَّلَ عَلَىٰ التَّنْبِيهِ وَالتَّوْكِيدِ Then notice how Allah began this verse with the term ألا which indicates in the, in the Arabic language to make you aware and for uh, for نُونَ uh, لِلتَّوْكِيدِ for affirming and confirming for emphasis. Okay? And this is in, when you say ألا ألا له الخلق والأمر it has a special position in the Arabic language. لا لغيره فالخلق هذا هو والأمر هو التدبير. Now, أما الملك فدليله قوله تعالى ولله ملك السماوات والأرض. Now we dealt with the evidence of why Allah is the only Creator. As for the mulk, remember we said there's three things that prove the Tawheed of Rububiya. Al mulk, ownership. The evidence for that is in Surah Al Jathiyah and verse number 27. And this verse is found in many different places in the Quran. Surah Al Jathiyah, verse 27. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs or the ownership of the heavens and the earth. No, the Al Jathiyah. And to Allah belong all that is in the heaven and the earth. So, this is the evidence for mulk. Ownership. Ownership. If everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah, there is nothing else. For creator, what is the example? Uh, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 54. أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ Verily, to Allah is the creation and command. Evidence for Evidence for mulk is Surah Al-Jathiyah yani the prost, uh, To go down on your knees Kneeling on your knees Verse 27 Same ruling So Allah, the Lord, Azza wa Jal, is the one singled out in creating, in the mulk, in ownership and tadbir, arranging the affairs. Tadbir, you meant the He did not mention it, but uh, you could say, yudabbiru uh, al-amr. I don't know which verse it is, but I know, I know the verse. I will get it for you, inshaAllah ta'ala, next week. Yudabbiru al-amr, yudabbiru al-amr. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. فَإِنْ قُلْتَ Shall we deal with this or not? We'll deal with this, inshallah. Why not? فَإِنْ قُلْتَ كَيْفَ نَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ مَا قَرَّرْتَ وَبَيْنَ إِثْبَاتِ الْخَلْقِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ مِثْلُ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ وَمِثْلُ قَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم في المصورين يقال لهم أحيوا ما خلقتم ومثل قوله تعالى في الحديث القدسي ومن أظلم ممن ذاب يقلقوك خلقي فكيف تجمع بين قولك أن الله منفرد بالخلق وبين هذه النصوص 
Now the Sheikh, may Allah have mercy on him, had a very nice style. 